So the differential in your Mazda MX-5. You may have a basic understanding of what it is, what it does, but do you really know what you've got? Well, stick around for my in-depth explanation on everything that you need to know about diffs for the Mazda MX-5 Miata. Now, over the years, the differentials that came in the MX-5 Miata changed and varied in a number of ways. So, I thought it'd be a good idea to run you through all the different configurations, how to identify what you have, and some maintenance tips and upgrade options available. So, to kick things off, let me quickly summarise what the diff is, how it works, where it lives in the MX-5, and how to get it out. Now obviously the differential is used to split the engine's power out to each of the two rear wheels. In the MX-5 it also acts as a fundamental part of the car's drivetrain and for a secondary purpose that is being the brace to which the gearbox and the engine also attach via the large beam known as the power plant frame. The diff is bolted to the rear subframe with two large nuts which bolt through this section here with the big rubber bushes and it's also bolted with a few other little bits and pieces but uh, fundamentally they're the main parts that hold it in. Of course, you've got the two drive shafts that slide in each side of the differential and the main drive shaft or tail shaft to the gearbox. Often the rear section of the exhaust needs to be removed to allow enough room to lower the differential and on some of the later cars, there's also a variety of underbody bracing which can get in the way and that's slightly changed throughout the years. So with the diff now on the bench, let's talk about some of the individual components and the differences that came throughout the years. First up, let's talk about the external visual appearances. The first MX-5 diffs that came with the 1.6 litre equipped cars came with what is called the uh, 6 inch differential or 6 inch ring gear. Uh, this actually derived from early rear ends of a 1980s uh, Mazda 323 and that was apparently some sort of all wheel drive drive train that was from back in the 70s, so quite old technology. However, thankfully Mazda knew they'd made a bit of a mistake and so when the 1.8 litre engine came in 1993, they moved to the larger and stronger 7 inch ring gears, which are what these two diffs are here. These diffs were actually derived from the uh, RX-7 of the 80s, and so they're clearly stronger and certainly superior. Generally, uh, these are good for about 400 rear wheel horsepower or somewhere around there, uh, but that's certainly no guarantee. The 1.6 diffs are a bit of a question mark and are known to go even with the standard, uh, standard engine power. There are some physical differences, apparently none of the 1.6 diffs have this uh, rubber damper here that the, all the 1.8s have. The 1.6 diffs also didn't have the uh, fins on the rear case on the aluminium housing uh, early on in the years, however eventually there were some finned rear diffs on 1.6s later in the years. Uh, all the 1.8 diffs were all finned. Now while the 1.6 differential is the inferior and weaker product, uh, thankfully the two different size differentials are very similar and interchangeable. Provided the associated drive shafts, which go through the sides, and the tail shaft that goes to the gearbox are also swapped. So a 1.6 diff needs 1.6 drive shafts, a 1.8 diff needs 1.8 drive shafts. Then they can go into any of the NA or NB chassis cars. The drive shaft for the 1.8 diff is actually 48 millimeters shorter than the 1.6 equivalent and has larger flange bolts for the diff. Also, while we're talking half shafts, I should also mention that all the 1.6 differentials came with two piece shafts. So you had a uh, section that went through the differential, a flange, and then a uh, separate section that went off to the wheel hub. With the 1.8 diffs, while the tail shafts were not the same as the 1.6, they were again two pieces until sometime in 1995 when Mazda moved to a one piece half shaft. And while there were small physical differences in the 1.8 shafts throughout all the years, with things like ABS coming along, fundamentally they were all interchangeable. Uh, these aren't really known to fail even with high horsepower, usually something else goes first like a gearbox, but they can go. Alright, now let's get inside the diff. So let's start with the gears. As I mentioned, the 1.6 had a 6 inch diameter ring gear, however this diff is a 1.8 with the 7 inch diameter gearing gear. Gear ratios changed quite a bit over the years and models and varied depending on the location the car was sold. So let me summarize as best I can and I'll throw in some pretty graphics here on the screen to uh, help out as well. 
So in 1993, the 1.6 rear end was a 4.3 to 1 ratio. That is for the 6 inch ring gear size. There's no known alternative ratios that came out in Mazda factory. However, there was a 4.875 ratio aftermarket set. With the 1.8 cars out from the NA, 4.1 to 1 ratio was what they ran for all manual and auto gearboxes. However, when the NB first came along with the 5 speed gearbox, Mazda moved to a 4.3 to 1 ratio gear set in most markets except here in Australia, where we for some reason stuck with the 4.1 to 1 ratio on the 5 speed. Moving on, when the MB10 AE came along, the 10th anniversary edition, that was released with the 6 speed gearbox and it got the 3.9 to 9, 3.909 9 to 1 ratio rear end. And note that this was a special edition and the 5 speed NBs continued with the same ratios as previously mentioned. However, then the NB facelift came along with the factory fitted 6 speed on all cars. That meant that Mazda continued with the 3.909 to 1. Except here in Australia again, where we got for some reason a 3.636 to 1 ratio rear end. Uh, of course, while it was good for efficiency on the highway, it made that gearing a little mundane and long. So let's summarize all those 1.8 gear ratios if you ever want to swap them. You've got the 3.636, 3.909, 4.10, 4.30, which all came from factory cars out of the factory from Mazda. There was also a 4.44, which came from a Mazda Ute. Then there's the 4.625 and the 4.778 found in some certain Kias, which can also fit into the 7-inch diff. And then lastly, there were some aftermarket gear sets. 4.57, 4.875, 5.125, and 5.38 ratios. Good luck sourcing all that stuff though. You got all that right? <sighs> I think it's time we move on to the diff center. As I mentioned, this is the guts of the diff that decides how the power gets distributed to each of the two rear wheels. This particular differential, and both of them in fact, are uh, open center diffs meaning that they effectively split the torque evenly among the two rear wheels. But that can result in a drive of the engine being sent to the wheel of least resistance. The easiest way to identify an open diff is the shaft running through the middle of it, which can be seen through the axle hole in the side of the diff. Of course, an open diff is the safest and easiest option to drive for an amateur. However, they're not ideal for track work or performance driving or that sort of thing, as you can lose drive due to wheel spin. That is, of course, where your LSD centers come in. With the 1.6 engine cars, there was a viscous LSD on offer from the factory. It was better than an open center, but it wasn't great. They are a sealed item, there are no clutch discs in them, and you can't really service them. The actual function of a viscous LSD is quite complex, so I'll leave a description in the link below. I'll leave a description in the link below. I'll leave a link in the description below with more detail on how they work. The 1.8 differentials came with a more desirable torque sensing LSD center, or Torsen for short. There were a couple of styles on offer over the years. The Tolson Type 1 was on offer from the earlier 1993-94 NAs with the 1.8 and the Tolson Type 2 was available from around 1995 through to the end of the NB's life. Again, their design and function is complex, so see a link in the description if you're after more specifics. However, I do want to mention that the Type 1 is a worm gear type Tolson, whereas the Type 2 uses a sort of uniquely mounted drive gear. And while they are slightly different in their design, they function very, very similarly. Uh, the Torsen Type 1 has a clear hole all the way through the axle hole, and while the Type 2 has a smaller opening through the middle of it. Uh, the Type 2 is generally considered to be slightly stronger. And lastly, there's also the Clutch Pack LSDs available for the 1.8 size diff from the aftermarket manufacturers like OS Geiken or Geeken. Uh, Kaz, Cusco, these sorts of things. These are quite a bit different again in their design in comparison to an open diff for sure and also even a uh, Torsen differential. And while the Torsen differentials aren't really known to fail, the clutch pack centers are certainly more useful when you're starting to look at higher power levels, say over 200 odd horsepower at the rear wheels. And of course the last of the factory LSDs, which is worth a very important mention, was the Tochigi Fuji Super LSD. And while it's an awesome name, it came fitted on the NB's from around about 2003 onwards, except for the uh, Mazda Speed Miata in the US and the turbocharged SE sold here in Australia. The TFS is a form of clutch LSD, but is generally considered to be not much of an upgrade over the factory Torsen diffs. It kind of makes the uh, upgrade a bit more trouble than it can be worth. I'm not saying it's a bad diff at all. If you get one for the right price, it's certainly upgrade over any of the other factory options, but it is a bit more unique and the benefits aren't that huge. So while that's the gist of an MX-5 diff in a nutshell, there are some tidbits that we do need to add. 
first up, there are in fact some other interchangeable parts that get a little more convoluted and difficult. So, the 1.8 pinion length is the same as the first gen RX-7s and certain B2000 Utes. The rear 1.8 housing is also almost identical to the late 80s and early 90s naturally aspirated RX-7s and is apparently interchangeable. However, the rubber mounts are different. There was a clutch type LSD from the naturally aspirated RX-7 from around 1984 to 1988 that will also fit into these 1.8 diff sized housings. However, while I don't have a lot of info on exactly how they perform versus a factory torsen or even an aftermarket clutch unit, I have heard that they are apparently quite capable. And then of course there is the uh, interesting tidbit for all of you Honda lovers out there, the 7 inch differentials that are used in all your uh, 1.8 powered MX-5s are also the same size and gear set used in the Honda S2000. However, the rear housing, it is different and the axles are again larger. So nothing is really directly interchangeable. However, you can swap the ring gear and the pinion gear. Also keep in mind, if you're considering changing your final drive ratio, that you will affect the speedometer and you may want to change the speed sensor in your gearbox to compensate for that change. And lastly, if you're curious on what oil you should be running in your differential or any other components of your MX-5, be sure to check out my video guide to oils for the MX-5, which goes into more detail on all of that. Well, that pretty much covers everything diffs for the NA and NB MX-5 Miata. Of course, I've left out some of the finer details, but you can check out the link in the description below with some more in-depth explanations on everything we've spoken about today. Uh, if there's anything that, you ma that I uh, may have missed, it happens, I do make mistakes, uh, please leave a comment below and I'll try and update my site with any corrections. As always, be sure to check out some of my other content. I've got some awesome videos here, some awesome links here, stuff that you can find out about us, about Beavis Motorsport, and about diffs. Uh, thanks very much for watching. We'll see you next time.